Hello Internet, welcome to Grim Survival. It's a grim kind of day, isn't it? Today I'm going to talk about kids in SHTF or SHTF scenarios. Let's uh, get right into it. Most of us have kids, especially us preppers. You know, we have reasons for prepping. One of our reasons normally is our family. We want to keep our family safe. We want to make sure our kids you know, have what they need. They're not going to go through some kind of uh, starvation or bad situation where they're not going to be able to eat or, you know, get themselves into some kind of a dangerous situation. So, safety is a big priority for most fathers, especially when you have a daughter like I do. I have a couple of them. And teaching your children to defend themselves if they are of a proper age with either firearms, um, some people do martial arts, karate, things like that. Those are good skill sets to have, but there's always a way around it. There's always the stray bullet. There's always the psycho with a knife. There's always more of them than there are of you. So one thing I think about quite often is what will I do in a SHTF scenario if I need to defend my family? And of course I am prepared. I have, you know, my firearms, my ammunition. But at what point can you not fend off all of the attackers? Do you have a group, a family, a, a tribe, if you will, of people that are trained to defend themselves? Are your children trained? I have a very young child, six months old. I have a 15 year old. Can they defend themselves? Six month old can. I have a seven year old. She is very spoiled, for lack of a better word. They are all addicted to basic devices, as most kids are. They you know, play on their phones and their tablets and computers. Kids are kids, that's what they do. But, you know, when I was a kid, we played outside. Now they play on devices. So, what skills do they really have in an SHTF scenario? I mean, can they pick up a 22 and watch your back? Something to think about. But when all hell breaks loose and chaos is going on all around you and it's just you and you're protecting them and you have 15 guys outside your door, what are you doing with your last few shots? Something to consider. If you've ever uh, read the book by C.A. Rudolph, it's the What's Left of My World series. They go into some pretty graphic scenarios of what a group of, uh, in the, the book, it was a group of bikers. They were basically marauders. But what they do to teenage and younger girls. Very good series. I would definitely recommend it. Um, along the same lines is, what about food? Do you have enough preps for your children? Do you? I mean, you're talking a lot of food if you have a big family. A lot of food. Bear Independent posted uh, his chart on Patreon for how much food you need. It was 750 pounds of food per person per year. Now, this is about 3,600 calories per person. Your average seven-year-old isn't going to need 3,600 calories a day, but, you know, they will by the time they're about 13, 14, especially if it's a, a boy, if you got male. Your son is going to need a lot of calories, especially when puberty comes to play. So, storing food. Gotta have it. Gotta have your water. But, what about your neighbors? Your kid's best friend? The acquaintance down the road? What are you going to do? Are you really going to sit in your house and look out your windows, sit on your porch and watch these kids go by that are starving to death? You're going to watch your, your child's best friend just wither away and die? Or are you going to go into your preps? Or are you going to try to help them? So maybe thinking about putting away extra food for some people that may not be that close to you. A lot of people are not going to be able to sit back while their kid eats and while they eat 
and not help the six-year-old across the street that has the bloated belly and you can see his ribs you're gonna be able to watch him starve to death would you then you got to think about yourself so what if you start taking your food from your personal mouth and giving it to that kid across the street so now your kids are eating those kids are eating but you're not you have a seven-year-old daughter do you think she can take care of herself when you die do you think she can go on without you can she grow her own food Does she have the ability the skills the knowledge to go out there and take a shovel and start turning over dirt mine don't so am I going to take food out of my mouth and give it to the starving kid next door across the street it's a hard choice isn't it I can't answer that question right now because I have not been in that situation I don't know if I could do it I don't know if I could watch the kid die across the street well you could board up your windows and not look out and just you know not pay attention try to play board games and card games and eat your rice and your beans and not listening to the screams outside there will be screams especially if you live in a suburban area people will die and you will have to watch it if you are prepared you will have to watch it it's a sobering thought and I just don't know if I could do it I don't know if I could watch the kid across the road die while I eat while my kids eat I don't know I really don't what about bugging out you have a baby uh, strap that baby to you with your 30 pound pack I have a 30 pound pack it's right there it's about 33 pounds or so that's with water and food in it my kid can't carry it seven year old's not going to carry it I don't even know if my 15 year old can carry it because yeah you know 15 year olds but do they have their own pack do they have enough water to sustain themselves? My seven-year-old's not going to be able to carry a gallon of water in a pack with some extra supplies. She's just not going to be able to do it. So now I'm having to carry her water and mine. Are you really going to bug out with your, with your kids in tow? Now, sure, I have a 15-year-old and my wife and myself. We could add a little extra water for the seven-year-old in our bag. A little bit here in this bag a little bit in that bag it evens out the weight a little bit she can carry a couple bottles of her own I mean these aren't really that heavy a seven-year-old can carry two or three of these so. they might not like it but what about shoes Does your seven-year-old have hiking boots Does your baby have hiking boots no. what about a stroller you think well I can push a stroller down the road I can fill the stroller with water on a little tray underneath a little basket you know my baby has plenty of water okay so you're gonna bug out and walk down the road I'm gonna go down the local highway walk through town after town to get to where you're going I'm not pushing a stroller I'm not walking down any roads I tell you that so they make those chest harnesses and things and back harnesses you can strap the baby to you but you be able to walk very far with a baby and what about security with your baby your baby's gonna get hungry and it's gonna cry it's gonna give away your position so I think we've established that bugging out with young children is a really bad idea if you're on foot if you can drive that's that's good you can bring a lot more supplies you can pack everybody into a, a big vehicle but what happens when you're halfway between your house and your bug out location you have nowhere to go you have a baby and a dog in tow and you have to leave half of your stuff behind and just take your packs and walk you got shoes I keep saying shoes because I know my my seven-year-old loves her flip-flops and she grows out of shoes every five minutes so do you have shoes for the future Shoes are important. So are socks. It's a, it's a grim kind of thought, isn't it? What am I going to do with my children? 
Um, me and a friend of mine have had this conversation about our families. We are way more prepared than our spouse and our children. And our spouses, they kind of think we're crazy. We're at that stage in life where they think we're crazy preppers. And yeah, we have supplies and stuff. And you know, they're not really that big into it. So they don't train, they don't walk, they don't slap on a 30 pound pack and see how many miles they can go in, in an hour. They don't do it. So, gonna leave your family behind? You gonna die to defend your family? Most of us say that, but would you really? You wouldn't know that unless you've been in that situation where you've had somebody with a gun pointing it right at your head and saying, Give me your daughter or I'm going to kill you. Give me your daughter? Or maybe you think, yeah, sure, take her. And when he turns his back, he's going to shoot you? No. This is going to be more like a Negan situation where the four of you are on your knees and you have 50 of them around you, all with guns. You're not going to be able to do it by yourself. You need support. You need a bug out location. You need a lot of food, a lot of water. But your neighbors, gonna watch them die. It's a grim thought, I know. But survival, survival isn't pretty. Survival isn't fun, it's not romantic. It's not one of these movies, Walking Dead, where, you know, the guy's kissing the girl on the farm, whatever. That's not survival. Survival's grim. People will die. 